Senator the Honorable Reginald Amo, Senior Counsel Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Penelope Beckles, Minister of Planning and Development, the Honorable Mr. Justice Adrian Saunders, President of the Caribbean Court of Justice, Judges of the Supreme Court, the Honorable Mr. Justice Norton Jack, the Honorable Justice Helen Noah Donaldson Honeywell, Senator Hazel Thompson Ayi, Member of the Senate, Mr. Dennis Zulu, Director of the ILO, Mr. Keith Scotland, Member of Parliament for Port of Spain South, Her Honor, and Lady of the Evening, Mrs. Deborah Thomas Felix, President of the Industrial Court of Trinidad Tobago, Chairman of the Specialist Courts, Vice Chairman, Vice President, Chairman, and Judges of the Industrial Court of Trinidad Tobago, Alderman Anthony Roberts, Chairman of the Samuel Lavender Regional Corporation, Members of the Inner Bar, Heads and Members of Trade Union Organization, Heads and Members of Employer Organizations, Practitioners of the Industrial Court, specially invited guests, members of the media, good night. It's an honor for me to deliver this keynote address on the launch of this book. And this was a very easy task. The Honorable Madam President is so well accomplished, it was, difficult, it was, it was not difficult to put this together. And when I started to read more and more about, about her, and more and more about your accomplishments, Your Honor, I describe you as a woman of first. And I want to take a few minutes to go into that. And it may not be a surprise for the invited guests here, but for the people who view this recording afterwards, I think it will be educational and edifying for them to understand this message. Her Honor was the youngest person in Trinidad and Tobago to be elevated to the bench as magistrate after practicing as an attorney at law. Then within, <laughs> if we continue like this, we'll have to clap after every bullet point. <laughs> Within four short years, she attained the position of senior magistrate. Four years. She went on to assist the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in setting up the family court. Seen some congratulations showing at the front. And she, where she became the president. She became the first, the court was the first family court to be established in the OACS. She went on after acting as Chief Magistrate to be the first woman to ever hold the position of Deputy Chief Magistrate in Trinidad Tobago. All right, we'll take you. She then became the first woman to be appointed as the Chairman of the Trinidad Tobago Securities and Exchange Commission. She went on to be appointed the President of the Industrial Court, the position in which she which she holds today as the first female to be appointed in that position and now serves as the sixth president of the court. In 2014, she moved on to be a judge at the United Nations Appeal Tribunal, the first Caribbean national to ever be appointed in that position. In 2015, she was appointed by the governing body of the ILO as a member of the Committee of Experts on the application of conventions and recommendations. One of 20, one of 20 of the world's most eminent legal luminaries to sit on this committee. She became the first Trinidad and Tobago national to be appointed as a member of this committee. Well done. In 2020, she moved on to be appointed as a member of the IMF's tribunal, where she became the first Caribbean national to be appointed to that position as well. So 
So we see the trend. So continuing on the momentum of first, I will say that she's also the first again to bring serious, meaningful, and comprehensive literature in the area of industrial nations. In a way that's practical, hands-on, and real life. For those who practice it, most of us in this room have experience with it. There's very little literature and readings that you could depend on. Most of it you have to pay, pay for and pay heavily for. This book title, Labor Law and Industrial Relations, focuses on two areas I think are very important. Progressive discipline, which as employers and as labor representatives, I think this is maybe the topic that comes up the most in terms of progressive discipline and maternity protection. And it is good that we have a framework within this publication for us to follow so we could get things right. We should also appreciate the focus on women's rights in the workplace, especially on the focus on the maternity protection side of the publication. As people who like to learn, and we're in the business of learning, we're in the business of educating and also improving our own sphere of people, we want to learn from the best. You want to go to the best schools, you want to land a job at the best companies, and you always want to be involved or be in that place of learning from people at the top. And I would say that you are not in doing this publication. I think there is no better person at the top that we should learn from from industrial relations than yourself. So thank you for bringing this second publication to life. <laughs> Benefits of this book. I want to give you a story quickly from the first book. Where I, where I practice and where I work, we took this as a, as a team challenge and I told the, the Honorable President this, this already. We took this book, we bought it for both management and union, shop stewards and my managers, and we put everybody in the same class because I, want every, I wanted everybody to be speaking the same language. Because what you find in the workplace is that the, the, the knowledge gap is what causes issues. So by having my teams on the, on the same page, understanding reading from the same hymn book or your book, your books, it helped a lot in terms of easing tensions. No issues, less fighting great faster solutions to workplace problems, greater collaboration. That's not to say that there will not be disagreements, but the disagreements are solved in a faster time frame with a lot more respect and education as to the law and the principles in which we practice. So, in conclusion, industrial relations has moved away from the narrow confines of just the employment contract. It has to now address concerns in different branches of the law, which in the publications coming out from honor does that. Industrial relations has to address concerns other than the rights of workers and the regulations of industrial disputes. Industrial relations in this modern age must promote a new consensus, a new approach to building labor management relations and cooperation of mutual interests to the, be to the best interests of workers themselves, management, labor representatives, and investors. The learnings, teachings, and protocols in this book, if you are smart enough to take advantage of it, gives us that. And I would suggest that for those who didn't have the first copy, that you also, you know, pick it up and, and, and get from it, share it with your teams. 
So I would like to welcome this second book, Your Honor. What I would call, if I may be bold to say, the second book in the University of Deborah Thomas Felix. And I thank you for taking the time to really bring this publication to life. We all learn from your experience and your knowledge. This is testament to a true leader, a true mentor, a true coach, and a genuine soul. Thank you very much.